the official podcast of CountryHodgePodge.com. I'm your host, Ooh. Steve Hodge. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, cousin, and lover, Kevin Hodge. Oh, hello, everyone. Um, So this past week, two, not one, but two of the worst country songs ever were released. And Yeah, they're really bad. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> On a, like a review for one of them, someone was talking about how, like, all right, well, the two songs, if you don't know, are Walker Hayes's You Broke Up With Me, a.k.a. Sam Hunt 2.0, um, and the other one is Toby Keith's Wacky Tabacky, and I saw two reviews, obviously one one for each, and then one of them said, like, Walker Hayes is the worst song ever, and then when the Toby Keith ones came out, they go, wow, did it out the Think, did the tides already shift that this is the worst country song ever? And I'm like, no, because Walker Hayes's is not a country song that they keep saying is a country song for some reason, and it's the worst song ever. But Toby Keith's is at least a country song. It's just a really bad country song. Well, it's just a really bad song. Like, well, yeah, yeah. It's well, yeah, that, it's I a- mean, both of them are. So when when I listen to, I mean, I just listened to as much of the preview for Walker Hayes's song as I could. I was, like, blown away by how bad... Because it's not even, like... the What I landed on was, as much as Sam Hunt is, like, literally a cancer to music in every <laughs> possible way, I can at least understand how someone who does not like country music at all, but loves pop music, could like Sam Hunt songs. Like, I can understand that. I disagree, because it's shit. Yeah. But I can at least understand that. When I listen to this Walker Hayes song, I'm like, how does anyone like this? Like, yeah. my God. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, can't, I guess if, if you're a huge pop fan, then maybe. But, it's, yeah, it's not a good song. No, it just sounded terrible. Like, even if you're a pop fan, I just don't understand any person listening to that song and being like, yeah, no, I'm cool with this. Like, what? Yeah, I'm going to write an article on it soon, but it's like the, the the title of the article, if anyone's listening and wants to keep their eyes out for it, it'll probably be up before this podcast goes up. Eh, I might publish it later. I don't know. But the title of the song is going, or the article is going to be Genuine Question, How the Fuck Is This Country Music? Because I... There's nothing about it says country other than the fact that Walker Hayes is Mr. He has a head that looks like a Lego block, and he says, this is country music. Other yeah, than I him, mean, respect to his jawline, I guess, but, like, yeah. what the fuck? I just, how, how does it constitute as country music at all other than the fact that Whiskey Riff sucks his dick all the time? Like, just because... No, it, it makes no sense to me. Just because they, they just because they are huge. Well, just because he wears their shirts, so they have to suck his dick, saying like, "Oh, we're huge Walker Hayes fans too," because he's a fan yeah. of us. But other than them, yeah, sucking him off. How is it? Oh this- yeah, and it, and it's totally like it's going to end up doing well on the radio because the labels will just push it onto the radio. And like, I just I don't understand how anyone can be behind this song. I remember Walker Hayes, I don't know how many years ago, he released that song Pants, which I actually thought was a catchy kind of song. It was at least... Oh, God, I hated that song. It was so bad. I didn't... Yeah, it wasn't good, but I didn't mind it. it you was kinda... can wear the pants as long as I get take them off you. Like, fuck off, dude. Like, <laughs> come on. I didn't mind it. I thought it was a decent, like, just a catchy song. I mean, at least it was country, too. Yeah, it had a country... Yeah, it had country elements to it, at least, unlike this fucking abortion of a song like yeah because i'm trying to think like i i don't obviously know very much about sam hunt songs because i make it about 30 seconds each one before i uh, attempt suicide but um i've actually at least made it through a sam hunt song before i I this thing but well i have i have i have when they're on at the bar and i'm forced to listen to oh true like that's really that's the only situation in which i do yeah but like I understand because people go, well, it's country because he talks about country things. I'm like, all right, fine, give him that. If if It's a far reach, but if we were to give him that, we can't give that to Walker Hayes because there's nothing about the song that's, the lyrics aren't country, the song itself is just a shitty pop beat. Like, is breaking up with someone, is that a country cliche? 
Is country it, music the only place you get stupid, broken up with? Like, all I could gather out of the, the song, too, is that it's just, like, the words don't even have any sort of flow to them. They're just stupid. Like, what the bit that he's just like, you don't have to, like, see me getting my get over you on. And it's like, that sentence doesn't even fucking make sense. <laughs> like, what are you even talking about right now? <laughs> like, the fuck are you saying right yeah, now? Yeah, it's, it's just... Like, I completely agree with uh, saving country music and just giving it a negative 0.5 out of 10. Yeah. Because it is... Generous. A generous negative 0.5. Yeah. It it is, like, the biggest hunk of shit I've ever heard in my life. I don't get it. Yeah, when when, when the title of his article was, No, seriously, this is the worst song ever, I was like, All right, let me check it out. And it was like, Oh, my God. No. Yeah. Like, I, I... Oh, my God. It's unbearable i can't do it like i would listen to sam hunt over this granted i'd I'd choose death over either of them but yeah whatever option three is i'm taking it but yeah yeah, (laughs) if i had two bullets and i had to choose between walker hayes and sam hunt i'd kill myself twice um (laughs) exactly like that's that that's the way it goes yeah but well i guess i'd take them both out actually but anyway um yeah it's (laughs) <laughs> I, it, like it's it's genuinely confusing to me like is it just because someone lives in nashville that they're suddenly a country artist like that it honestly would be like if if drake released a song and said the word truck once and I, would everyone all of a sudden be like dude he wrote a country song you know like, it's basically it, 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 i'm wondering because like atlanta rap is like a huge market of of music I'm just waiting for them to just be like, you know, Atlanta rap is now country because it's in the South. Like, that's basically what this song is trying to make happen. Like, let's just say, fuck it. If you're in the South, you're somewhere near a dirt road or the country or like <laughs> bumfuck white dudes, you are making country music. Like, that's that's the that's the progress we're on right now. Yeah, I, I this song, I mean, Sam Hunt unplugged the machine, but this is him Walker Hayes is putting the pillow over the face of country music right now and just ending it because there there's no more blurred lines in this genre it is just dead. Yeah, no, it's and it's not even like a mercy killing. This is this is like a fucking stab you in the balls repeatedly until you die <laughs> kind of kind of song. And I'm at the point honestly where it's just like if if they're considering this country music Fine, let them have the fucking term country music because that's what they just keep fighting for. And let's just go over and just turn all these actual country artists into Americana artists or something. Seriously. Because but I'm I, also honestly afraid of like that happening. Because what happens if we just give up on country and say, fine, you can take the country title and ruin it repeatedly but then what's going to happen we're going to all listen to americana which is fucking great and then all of a sudden there's going to be like sam hunt with the new americana song and just be like no yeah yeah i don't know if i talked to you about this i know i talked to doug about it but i don't know if I, we talked about it off air but i was joking that um uh like the term country music is just i feel like it's like suddenly cool to like country music like to you know, to be like, oh, I love going to country festivals and stuff. Like, I think it's like this thing that's ha- like in college, it's all of a sudden cool to say you like country music. So there's like people who say, I don't like country music until I heard Sam Hunt or now it's going to be Walker Hayes or uh, Gooch or any of that. Like, oh, I didn't like it until this. I think all it is is it's people justifying like, no, I do like country music because I like these guys. So yeah, no, they're I trying agree. to be in on the in crowd by saying, yeah, I like country music because I like these guys. Yeah, I agree. I think it's exactly the the situation was at first, like their first move, the labels and, and all those bullshit fuckers that, that are ruining everything were just like, all right, our first step is we start introducing these terrible artists and then we get all these people to say, I don't like country, but I like X. And now it's just going to be so many of those shitty artists that they can be like, Instead of saying, I don't like country, but I like X, they'll be like, oh, no, I do actually like country because I like blah, 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 blah. It'll just be now, I like country, I just don't like, you know, actual music that is good and has actual talent and songwriting. I, like, I, like I instead like to be shat into my ears repeatedly and then just fucking club me over the head with a pipe because why the fuck not? 
Yeah, well, it, it's like it's almost like the it's going it's a backward step, but it's almost the I didn't I don't like country, but I love Johnny Cash thing. It's the it's the yes. exact same thing, but it's in a bad way. Yes, like in the worst <laughs> possible way. Because the people who say I don't like country, but I like Johnny Cash, are the ones who don't actually listen to Johnny Cash. But if you say you don't like Johnny Cash, everyone's like, oh, it's like saying you don't like the Beatles or prince or something like it's just like yeah no if you it's, don't it's, like them you don't like music no yeah it's it's the cool thing to say it's it's also like anyone who like like that part from the dewey cox movie where it's just like if someone says they're a big bob dylan fan but they can't name a single bob dylan song they just know that <laughs> bob dylan's apparently a great songwriter so they're just like oh yeah i love bob dylan like yeah that, that's, that's like yeah yeah that's like me when i didn't pretend i was sad when david bowie died because i've never been a david bowie fan so i don't really care i mean i understand what he did to music yeah i mean like I'm, I'm i'm sad in the same way that i'm sad with any random actor dying that i don't know too well at all and i'm like you know yeah. that sucks that a person died but i don't know enough and it's like same with like prince like i i couldn't have told you i still can't tell you more than two Prince songs I can't pick a single David Bowie song out of my head right now as I sit here. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah. But, uh, like, yeah, so it's that, it's that exact same fact. And the people who are saying I didn't like country until uh, insert pop artist is there are the exact same people who in high school or even maybe go going into college, if you ask them what their favorite genre of music it was, they would say, and I quote, I like everything except country. Because oh, yeah. that because that's the thing that everyone says. I like everything except country. Yeah, and I so think now, that must have been there must have been like a huge round table meeting in the big Nashville offices where just like everyone who is cool apparently says they like everything except country. <laughs> we need to make them like our music. So instead of actually trying to make them like our music, let's just make our music their music. Yeah. But I guess before we go into the other terrible single That does kind of bring up a point of an article that we posted earlier this week, is that obviously these Nashville execs don't know shit because Jason Isbell's CD went number one. Yeah, so Jason Isbell's CD goes number one right after Stapleton goes gold, and neither of them have ever had a number one on country radio. However, they're the hottest-selling country music albums right now i granted yeah. isbel is is americana first yeah however it's like so people like actual music with actual songwriting but instead of giving that to the people on the radio let's just keep cramming shit into their ears until they don't know how to hear anymore and then they can't hear anything so we can just play them the same drum beat over and over again and they won't know the difference yeah it's just Ugh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to start a shit in your ears counter for this episode because it's yeah. I'm going on a roll here. Speaking of shit in your ear, before we go back into the, all the number one stuff, is Toby Keith's "Wacky Tobacky." Yeah, and this thing is just a bad song. Like I I looked at this one in the same way because I do like a lot of Toby Keith songs. He's got a lot of bad songs. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, like he's got he's got Run and Block which is hilarious. He's got yeah. Get Out of My Car which is hilarious and pissed off a lot of feminazis. He's got even yeah. I even didn't <laughs> I even didn't mind Red Solo Cup. It's really bad, but at it was, first it was fun and then it just got killed on the radio. Yeah, it surprise. Did get, it did get butchered and then everyone started wearing shirts that had Solo Cups on them and everything. Yeah. But like he's got uh uh uh, how do you like me now? He goes. I want to talk about me. He's got like my, these goofy my favorite songs. Song, my favorite song by him, which I is a very good song, is the song "My List," which yeah. is all about you know living your life and you know the things that you wouldn't have on your to do list on a Saturday, but you know enrich your life. And it's a really good song. And so well, he's yeah. an artist that has good music. So honestly, the way that I look at this wacky tobacky piece of shit is similar to the way that I looked at like when Accidental Racist came out, where I'm like, this is just a terrible song. Like This artist isn't you know, garbage overall, but this song is terrible and does not deserve being defended in any possible sense. Well, yeah, like, and well, like I'm saying, well, because, yeah, I can obviously say that Toby Keith has great songs. My favorite song by him is White Rose. It's an unknown song, It's but it's fucking amazing. He's got uh, A Woman's Touch, I Need to Hear a Country Song. Like, those Long. are all... A woman, a woman's touch. Um, <laughs> those are all 
amazing songs, but no, like his goofy songs, they were always harmless. And this one is yeah. just like he's trying to do a Weed with Willie 2.0, and it's just bad. Yeah, no, it's just really bad. And that's really like all I can say about it is that it's just not good. Like it was just a a gross miscalculation on whoever's part. And I wanna, I, I feel like it was just kind of like let's let's release this stupid thing. And maybe get some, you know, extra clicks and tweets and and you know whatever's. So just he to can, kinda... so he can prepare his annual terrible album. Exactly. So a new album will come out, and he'll have at least people talking about it because he at least had this come out, and hopefully he at least follows the same track of release an album that is bad to to terrible overall, but still has like one to four great songs yeah. on it. I can't remember what there was one song on Thirty Five Mile an Hour Town or whatever that CD was called that I liked, but the rest of it was pretty bad. He hasn't had a CD where I've enjoyed like half of it since maybe Bolts and the Gun. Yeah, drinks probably. after drinks after. I, I thought Clancy's had, Tavern was pretty good. Was that before or after Bolts and the Gun? That was after. I think oh. that was the one right after. Well, then maybe Clancy's Tavern was the last good one because that one had a lot of good songs. Yeah, but like. Drinks After Work had a couple okay ones, uh, but yeah, 35 Mile an Hour Town, it was just not a good CD, and it's just Toby Keith, is now he's just getting told what to sing, and it's just like, hey, we know you're like 50, but you need to stay relevant, so how about you smoke, talk about smoking weed, because it's legal in half the states, but you know. This will get the millennials <laughs> to re-interact with you. Yeah, even though you look like a zombie in the fucking video. Um, yeah, he definitely was super baked when he re- recorded that video. He was very... He just... <laughs> and then he's got that gross goatee. <laughs> just, <laughs> that was, and Willie Nelson looked like he was a dead puppet just being strung along. Um, he yeah. might have actually just been dead. Like, it's true. Like he, like he, they're just trying to hide it. They're like, ah, we got to get a little bit more out of God's problem child before you croak, Willie. I'm still not dead today. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're exactly. They're like, we we can't let you die yet. You just released the song, Still Not Dead. <laughs> great CD. It great is a, that is a really good CD. It really yeah, is. That's a great song. And then, obviously, He Won't Ever Be Gone. Um, oh, fucking great. But, yeah, so... Yeah, that's an atrocious yeah. song. But, and... And, and, yeah, but so to continue the theme of... of of songs and singles and number ones that are trash and garbage. Uh, Let's talk about the the article that Seven uh, Country Music posted that about Gooch featuring Bas- Backstreet Boys. Yeah. So for anyone who hasn't heard, the Gooch featuring the Gooch Street Boys had. Hey, don't disrespect <laughs> the Backstreet Boys. No, they get disrespected Everybody. now. Oh, I do yeah. love I do love me some some Backstreet Boys back in the day. Some drunken karaoke songs. That is that is beyond the point. The point is <laughs> the Backstreet Boys now officially have a number one in country radio because Ugh. of their being featured on Gucci's song uh, something. My mom on my truck and God or something. <laughs> I can't remember what the fuck it's called. But God, my woman, and my woman. Something, yeah, it's something bad. Me, my it's a mama, terrible song. And God, or something. Yeah, but basically the gist is the Backstreet Boys now have a number one song in country music. But who would guess all the people who don't have number ones I in country Go- music? I thought the Gooch hype train was like dying. I thought, hasn't their last music just kind of been failing? Well, that's why they had to get Backstreet Boys up on here. Oh yeah, that's right. If you're if you're starting to fail, you need to introduce pop artists into the thing. That's what Travis Tritt was complaining about. He's like, we've never needed pop artists to validate us before. Why do we need them now? Yeah. So, but basically, the deal is they have a number one, but uh, Chris Stapleton doesn't have a number one. We just talked about how he went gold, uh, despite Jason Isbell's album being number one in the country. His last two have gone number one in country, right? Uh, I think something. I cannot three. comment on that because I do not know. Yeah, I think it did. I think it beat out. It went. It was released the same week as Alan Jackson's last CD, and I'm pretty sure it beat it out barely. Mm. Yeah, but so he doesn't have a number one either. Uh, David Allen Coe, who has the song "You Never Even Call Me by My Name," which everybody knows, and Mona Lisa lost her smile. That Mona Lisa lost called? her smile. That yeah. went number two. Um, that's a lesser known one, but the other one that you'd think by David Allen Coe is the ride. How did the ride not go number one? Yeah. 
And then um, Sturgill Simpson doesn't have a number Sturgill one. Sturgill Simpson has never even charted. Yeah, of course that makes sense. Yeah, wins and, Grammys, but you know, fuck yeah, me. wins the Grammy for best country album and is nominated for best overall album. Yeah. Like, yeah, but no, no, you can't have a number one because why would the radio play real music? That would be ridiculous. Even Cam's Burning House peaked at number two. She doesn't have a number one hit. Yeah, and you'd think even like she'd be able to because she does have a more uh, like radio friendly, you know, sound going on. Because Burning she House loves... is a great song. Oh yeah, my because... god! And and song. she and she loves Yellow. Yellow. <laughs> She's a big fan of yellow. She wears it all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, how do these artists not go number one, but, well, of course we know how, because we've talked about all the time how the radio is just bought pretty much now. Which, and, basically, this is what we're fucking talking about. Like, I'm these pretty... These artists aren't getting recognition, they're getting recognition in certain ways, like Sturgill with the Grammys, but, like, the radio was not playing good music. And it's, it's like, obvious, and now we have stats to back us up. I feel like if if you were to call into the radio to request a song, you'd, you'd call and be like, can I hear I'm Not the Devil by Cody Jinx? They'd be like, we can't play that, but would you like to hear Florida Georgia Line? Not really. All right, we're going to have to say ha- get a recording of you saying, I'd like to hear Florida Georgia Line, <laughs> so then they can say it, so they can have it like lead into the song. Where yeah, it's the like, sound Can bite. I hear the, this song by them because I love it, it reminds me of my boyfriend. And then they play the same song. 10 times in an hour and oh i'm glad you requested that song that we didn't tell you to request it was totally what we were about to play anyway yeah exactly and yeah so i just i mean thank god we don't listen to the radio anymore because yeah but thank god we have outlets to listen to music elsewhere oh and another person who hasn't gotten a number one hit even though she did get one in i think the top 10 at one point her career was sunny sweeney yeah and that Who brings us amazing. Yeah, so that brings us to our topic of the week is Sonny Sweeney. We've if you've listened to episodes before this week, if you're not just tuning in to hear about her because she's awesome, uh, we've gushed about her on at least half of the podcasts we've done. <laughs> yeah, well, she so she released the, her album Trophy this year earlier this year. It was like so right we, around our first. Album yeah, podcast so we got to talk so. about it. We so we got to talk about that album on the podcast, but we've also brought up a bunch of our other songs as we've gone because... We did them on the moving on and the breakup list. Because they're so good. Like, she literally... And I I know I've said this several times about artists, but I believe it every time I say it. It's one of those artists that they don't have bad songs, so just listen to all of it. Just just go through all of it. Yeah, the only one... I mean, obviously, I, I agree, listen to all four of her CDs, but the only one that doesn't stick out to me as her first one because she didn't even write that many songs on it, actually. Oh, really? She had a lot, she had a lot of those ones written for her because I, I looked up at the track listing for everything, and yeah, that one was a lot other people wrote, but her other three CDs, she's pretty much every song is written yeah. by her. But I still do like, I mean, we'll get to our, our top lists, and I've got some of those songs included yeah. from that first album because I oh, yeah. still do it's, like it's it not It's not bad. I'm just saying, like, compared to the other three it's the weakest of them, but her other... That's just because her other three are masterpieces. Like, oh, yeah. It's... Yeah, no no album is, is lacking in, in yeah. any sense. Yeah. It, yeah, they're all... Yeah, they're all real, real good. Um, But, like, and the thing with her is... I mean, I don't know how much we've talked about it, really, but it's always a discussion is the females in country music because only two are in the top 40 on the radio, I think. And... A lot, most of them are like Carly Pierce is well deserved because she's amazing. Yep. And I had a dream about her last night, and she rejected me in my dream. And I woke up and I was like, "That's about right." And Carly, <laughs> come back to me <laughs> because yeah, because my dreams are realistic. And then, um, <laughs> and then I know Tin Man was in the top forty for a little bit. And I don't think it is anymore. And then I think like probably Kelsey Ballerini or something is in the top forty. <sighs> but um, yeah. She's like we. Sonny Sweeney, like comparing to Brandy Clark because, not their sound is similar, but they both are just real art. Like they don't every song they write isn't just like my high school boyfriend broke up with me. It's like they talk yeah, about they talk about divorce, broken families. 
I, I was when I was binging through Sunny Sunia for this past week. I realized she's the other girl in like half of her songs. Like, oh so. yeah, and it's it's one of those things where we've we've touched on a little bit before. Where and I, I complained about it how it's like how you know like you could take it to the level of like how offensive to these artists is it that like the only songs that seem to chart anymore are these you know Carrie Underwood style you know revenge on the ex-boyfriend who cheated on me songs because like all that does is just paint them into this box of like this is the only kind of music they can make and so Sonny Sweeney is this this artist that makes such great music that has actual meaning and actual like songwriting and it's actually country but she's not on the radio which is just bullshit because she's so much better well I was actually thinking about that um when I was leaving the uh, gym earlier I was driving home and I was thinking about this episode so and I thought like the I don't because obviously there are so many amazing female artists out there, but I feel like they get put in this bubble of they have two types of songs. They have the um, my boy my ex boyfriend's an asshole, and so I'm gonna woman power. I'm better than him, and to get all the girls to go like woo in the bar, like yeah, this is where women go. I'm a redneck woman, and then or else they're just like the the arm piece. To them, like, because I, I was like the the the, the quote unquote like sorority female songs or whatever that are popular are. It's either yeah we're empowered, we're the best, and fuck boys, we don't need them, or else it's um, I'm being objectified by a boy because I'm wearing skin tight jeans and dancing on a truck. Like those are the two songs that you have to yep. choose from as a woman. But which Sunny is bullshit. Sings, because, I mean, the best for the strong, empowered ones are Miranda Lambert, because she's got amazing ones. And then her, song, really good. her song, Tin Man, is amazing. Yes, it's it is. It's so good. And um, that song breaks my heart. But, like, but Sonny Sweeney's, is she's not, like, the victim of all boys are mean. It's more of just, like, it's, like, you could, I could sing the songs, and uh, they wouldn't be as good because I suck at singing, but they, <laughs> but they could... If you just replaced he with she in the songs, they would, yeah, they would yeah. be part of our life. Exactly, too. they're they're songs that have meaning beyond the stupid, you know, whatever catchphrase, you know, hook that you have in the in the yeah. In the chorus. They're not they're not gender specific. Is what I'm trying to get at. Like, obviously, she sings them from the point of view as a woman because she is a woman, but they're. They're just so well written that they're just about life. Yeah, it's the same with Brandy Clark. Exactly. I, I think about that. You know, the the one that's popping up in my head right now is like her her song "Bottle by My Bed" could could very well be a song from the perspective of a husband who who's got a wife and they and they're just again like they're just not getting pregnant. They want to have a yeah. family. It could very easily be be switched, and it's just because it's a very real situation that affects a lot of people in the country or in the world. And it's something very relatable, and it's such a well-done song that it's not like, oh, well, I'm not just some random Southern Belle girl, so I can't relate to this anymore kind of stupid shit. Yeah, speaking of which, she just released a music video for that, so we're going to have to post that on the website because... Oh, I watched it, and it was great. Yeah, it's... I, I love Sunny That's such a good... That's, that's, she's so good! Yeah, if, if she was 13 years younger and I wasn't so ugly, I would still get rejected by her, but... And not married, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's yeah amazing. Oh, I, I wrote this down because it made me laugh. I was reading her bio on her own personal website, and she has this quote. It says, my biggest compliment is when someone says, man, I hate chick singers, but I love me some Sonny Sweeney. Because <laughs> that kind of goes into the same thing of that she's, yeah, she just sings real shit. She sings yeah. about divorce, alcoholism, drug addiction, of uh, just broken families and just just like things that actually happen other than let's go get drunk at the lake yeah well because isn't which like, I, I love to do don't get me wrong oh yeah i, I lo- yeah i love getting wasted we're gonna do it this weekend but um <laughs> for the <gym. laughs> yeah but um like i can't remember i've i've never heard the song all the way through but isn't like kelsey ballerini's like boy song or whatever isn't it just like a terrible just high school drama type relationship song. No, I heard it on the radio and I had of cancer now, so <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to be put through that. But yeah, so she's just amazing. So I guess we could just jump right into our yeah. top ten. This was impossible to get to ten. Yeah, this is one where I have a top ten 
Um, if I made a top 10 tomorrow, it could be different in many ways because of yeah. just so many songs are great that I didn't like, I, I, I just basically got to the point where I had this long list of songs and I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm putting these songs into a list <laughs> and I'm going with it. I'm just going to go with it. Yeah. That's, ex- that's exactly how I did. I, I think it was Paisley was the last one where I had to just put it down and be like, I can't change it anymore because I'm going to drive myself crazy. Yeah. If no, I that's, keep... That- that's what I did with the with the with the breakup moving on songs because we yeah, had too many too. songs to choose from. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's well, yeah, because yeah, those weren't one artist. Those were I got to choose from the three thousand songs I've saved on Spotify. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but um, uh, putting in your coffee pouches. Yeah, quitting that, America. Quitting that dipper. Um, There's a from here. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess we could jump into it. Uh, on number ten. Of the impossible to make top ten Sonny Sweeney songs. I went with But You Like Country Music. I it, did too. Oh shit. Featuring Brennan Brennan Lay is the other singer in it. Ah, um, I did not actually know that. Oh you didn't you didn't know, did you not notice she had another singer in the no, song? No, I knew that she had oh, another okay. singer, I just didn't know who it was. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's, I thought yeah. she just changed her voice. <laughs> she just sings and actually, really quick, this is off topic, but uh, there was this video I once saw of Waylon Jennings performing "Good Hearted Woman" on stage, and, but but Willie Nelson wasn't there, so he was just singing like "Oh, she's a good," and then it goes, he goes, and Willie, and he just puts his hand over his nose, <laughs> he goes, "It's a good hearted woman," <laughs> <laughs> and it's really funny. I want to see if I could find that video because I might have to post it to the site because it's that's really awesome. Funny. But, uh, yeah, so, but you like country music. It's a, like, I have a couple happier songs on this, uh, couple, eh, just, eh, but, eh, yeah, I, but, yeah, <laughs> it was actually, it was tough between this song and, uh, Everybody Else Can Kiss My Ass, because this song is Literally just, the like, same. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah, but, like, so, Everybody Else Can Kiss My Ass is just about her getting off. This uh, is another one that you don't have to be on either gender singing this song, because it's just about getting off work on Friday, getting your paycheck, and the only thing you want to do that night is just go to the bar, get shit-faced, listen to music, and play pool. Like, that's yep. that's what the song is, and it's just like, if you, if you don't want to do that, then just kiss my ass, and it's an yep. amazing song. But this song... It's about a hippie moving in next door, and it's just like, oh, you have, oh, you probably love Ronald Reagan. Oh, you probably watch Fox News. You're probably a crazy person. Yeah, why are you just going? Back why are you forth. Why are you dressed in pajamas? And then it goes, oh, but you like country music, so it's just like, yeah, we we don't work out, but you like country music, so that's pretty sweet. <laughs> yep. And then, uh, yeah, so it's what is it? It's like I like you, even though you're so uptight, and it's just. Uh, what is it? Your your list goes all the way from Hank to Dwight or something like that, and it's talking mm-hmm. about like it's just this. It's a really yeah. funny song. It's I, just I like, love the. I just love the ending where it's just like uh, who they're like talking. They're like, "Who are you voting for this year?" And she's just like, uh, "I thought we were voting for Merle Haggard. I thought that's what we agreed <laughs> on." <laughs> Yeah, so it's a really it's a really goofy song. I like I had to include it. I had to include a couple happy ones just because she like John Moreland and Jason Isbell, her songs are so goddamn depressing that when she has a good, <laughs> so good when she has a good funny song, they're really good and they're really funny. So I had to include yeah, but you love country or but you like country music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, number 9. Number 9, I went with It Wrecks Me. Which Ooh. is off of one of them. <laughs> well, off of one of her CDs. It's Not off sure of Concrete. No, it's off of Concrete. I had to look it up real quick. Um, I like it a lot because it's a uh, it's a it's a broken heart song, but it's it's a broken heart song where you know she starts it off with like I know that I'm one you love, but I'm not the only one, and so it's like you know in this situation where she's in love with this guy, and there's some sort of either love triangle or whatever the dude's not like faithful or whatever but he can't you know she can't get over him and you know and she says like i've never had a broken heart till now kind of thing and it's just i think it's just a really good song it's depressing obviously but i think it's really good yeah it's yeah that one is yeah i know that one was probably on my top 20 or so but um my number nine, unless you have more to say about it. No, no, we can no. keep going. My number nine is from her CD Provoked, uh, Front Row Seats. 
it's just like uh pretty much just like I like it because it has that catchy like la 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 it all just sing along and it's just like mm. this pretty much just like the world's going to hell but the everyone's just singing these feel good songs and it's just like the world's gone to hell and I got front row seats to it and it's I just really really like it it's ha- it's like happy but this the the meaning behind it is sad but the song it just has like this really happy beat and it's really catchy yep that's a good one i like yep. it numero ocho and my number eight is stay-ins worse than leaving also from concrete so when before we started recording i said i don't think i have anything from concrete i lied you're really hard. high on drugs yeah um and i mean the title basically says it all it's you know the relationship failing and then you know getting you know gets to the point where you know staying's worse than leaving you know hitting that hitting that mental point i think about it similar to the way i think about the the chris stapleton song either way where it's just kind of like yeah realizing where you're at kind of thing i think it's just a really good song yeah that song is amazing um yeah it's and it's nice because it you know because actually that song I was listening to a lot during the dark phase of earlier this year because it was fucking fitting of... Hashtag Mohammed. Granted, yeah, hashtag false prophet. Um, she pretty much, not to, yeah, not to be personal in this, but she walked out and was pretty much... It's not the same as how it goes in the song, but it's pretty much she walked out and she told me to wait. And then it was just like I kept st- sticking along because it's like you know you love the person... But it's just getting worse and worse. It's not going to get better. So it's getting to the point where staying is just emotionally draining compared to if you were to walk away, it'll probably be better in the long run. Even though right now, it, like she says, uh, you don't. What is it? You don't get my reasons, but it feels a whole lot like treason. Like that whole thing of it's it's going to suck. You might not agree with it. And then like she has the line of. Um, it's not verbatim, but it's pretty much like you can paint me as the bad guy if it makes you feel better about yourself yeah. type of thing. Like it's just like, yeah, I understand this is a shitty situation, but it's gonna be better in the long run if we just end this because it's not going anywhere. And it's like, yeah, the, the title of the song, "Staying is Worse Than Leaving." So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's an amazing song. Um, my number eight is "Bottle by My Bed," which wow, that low, huh? Well, yeah, because it's impossible <laughs> to choose everything. But uh, Bottle by My Bed, uh, we can talk about more when we inevitably get to it on your list. But <laughs> pretty much it's about her. She's 40 years old now, and it's pretty much about her wanting a child, even though it's like everyone makes it seem like she doesn't because she's, oh, she's living this dream life of she's a country singer, she's touring, she's having all this fun, she's loving life with her family. Uh, she doesn't need a, she doesn't want a baby. And she's like, no, I really want a child. Like, and so it's, it's supposed to be like, you'd think it's going to be a whiskey lullaby because you think it's like, oh, she's going to sleep with a bottle by her bed. She's an alcoholic, but it's like, no, she wants a baby bottle by her bed when she goes to sleep. Like, yeah, no, and it's, it's such a great song and I'll probably talk about it more when we get to it on my list. But yeah, yeah, that's, that's the gist. Yeah. Um, so number seven. Uh, my number seven is Ten Years Pass, which is off the first album. Mm-hmm. Um, basically just about returning to her hometown after ten years, and she had, you know, been with a guy, and, you know, now ten years have passed, and she talks about how, like, the town hasn't really changed, and, you know, then she she's still got this, you know, kind of broken heart, you know, not really found love situation, not necessarily still totally tore up over him, but still kind of has him on his mind. And then she gets back in town and like, you know, sees him with his new wife and he's, and she's just kind of like talking about how like the 10 years have passed and she hasn't really changed. The town hasn't really changed, but he's, you know, moved on and, and, and starting yeah. a family. Yeah. It's really, really good. Um, my number seven is uninvited from provoked. I believe you're also. uninvited. I know. And this one, I still don't know if it's about a party or a wedding, because I always picture it as a wedding, because it, she talks about getting an invite, and I don't really know how many invites go out for parties anymore, but... Uh, yeah, probably a wedding. 
Yeah, because it's about her showing up, and she just thinks she's going to go and have a good time, but when she gets there, the music stops, and everyone's, like, staring at her and kind of whispering to each other of, like, how is she here? And so she just feels really bad. Like, she thought she was going to come and get, like, kind of, like, oh, hey, good to see you, but instead she's just getting, like, the cold shoulder from everyone, and she's like, well, you could have told me I was uninvited, and she doesn't know why everyone's being so cold to her and kind of ignoring her. And then the end of the song, you realize it's because her ex is also at the party or wedding or whatever they're at, and it's like, <laughs> oh, you could have. Oh, so then instead of it saying you could have told me you were uninvited, it changes to you could have told me you were here. Like, yeah. So it's just like this. Yeah, she doesn't know why she's being so shunned, but she's. Then, obviously, she finds out it's because, oh, your ex is also here. So this is awkward. And it's just a really kind of depressing song, so I had to include it because it's so oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number six. six. Uh, my number six is Trophy. Off of Trophy. I can remember that one because it's the name <laughs> of the album. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is a great song. The, the line with, uh, you got the trophy for you know, putting up with him, you know, about after the, after the breakup with the presumably cheating boyfriend, husband or whatever, I'm guessing. I don't know the lyrics well enough to know if they're, it's like explicitly said, but then just kind of in that perspective. Well, no, it's, isn't it that she's with the guy and she's talking about his ex because he's, she still wants like the, who she's with now because it's like, uh, because she talks about, like, you want your cake and to eat it in my living room. And, like, she has, like, all these lines about he had to put up with you, but I know what you're calling me now because she's calling her the trophy because that's why she's, like, that's why he's with her or whatever because she's a trophy wife and all this. And, but obviously she's kind of referring to you're calling me a bitch, not a trophy, like, type thing. And so yeah. it, I thought it was her, like, not Sonny Sweeney. I thought it was the new wife being the trophy and, like, she got dumped so that the guy could upgrade to a younger whatever. And so she said, you know, you get the trophy for putting up with him. So, like, she's the trophy, and that's why she's calling her a bitch. But now that we're debating it, one of us is definitely wrong, and we're going to find <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, let's see. You call him in the middle of the night saying you can't make ends meet. Maybe you should have thought about that before you made him take the back seat. Boom! She's the ex. Sonny Sweeney's the wife now. And then he says, what Wait, makes what? you think what makes you think he should fix your sink? He's a sink paying for your sins. He knows I love him more than you ever loved him. And so, yeah, I think you just think I'm pretty and you're just full of jealousy. I don't make him play the fool. Put him on a pedestal, something you would never do. Yeah, he's got a trophy now for putting up with you. So, yeah, oh, she's... Yeah. So, no, I get it. So, yeah, she's the current. And then, yeah, it's just, she's talking about the ex is still trying to, like get her husband to be like, no, come bang me instead. And she's like, no, you're a psycho bitch and stop trying to talk to my husband. <laughs> ah, I see it now that I read the lyrics. Yeah, you fool. Well, damn it. <laughs> I got the message right before you did for once. <laughs> I got <laughs> most of it. <laughs> it's because I've been binging her for the past week. I've listened to all of her CDs at least five times in the past week. So, um... Yeah, but yeah, that's an amazing song. Number, we're on six, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, my number six is Second Guessing. Um, it's from Provoked also, I believe. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, it's from Provoked. Um, I don't know if you know this song, but it's pretty much like, it's kind of like a Darius Rucker This type song, um, where it's just like, I went through a divorce, it was hard after it, but then I met you. And then it's like, you went through a divorce, but after yours, you met me. And so it's pretty much just like, I'm done second-guessing my mistakes because it brought oh, me yep. here. Yep, yep. And I just really like that message of just like, because, again, not to make it about my shitty recent-ish breakup, but it's just like, there is going to be a silver lining one day, even though it sucks dick. As you know also from going through breakups, it's going to suck Never. dick for a while, but even though that shit happened, it's going to get better. And it's just like, well, you can't second guess your mistakes. Like you can't be like, well, what if we weren't to, what if we were still together? Cause I know she has the lyric kind of like that. Of It's like, I can't keep asking like, what if this happened the other way? What if we did this instead of that? It's just like, no, nah, that stuff happened. It's done. And now it got, it brought me here. So I, so it's kind of one of her few 
um, really kind of upbeat messages, even though the song itself isn't super upbeat. It's definitely a better message. Yep. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I really like that one. So I put it at six. Woo. But number number five. Number five. I went with uh, "Better Bad Idea" off of Trophy as well. Trophy. Um, and this one's about you know basically going out. I want to say also after a breakup because she says in the corner of this black heart, which I have to imagine is because she's, you know, been heartbroken. Um, and basically it's like going, like, I'm going to, let's go out and, you know, get high as a kite and drink a lot and all this stuff and like all this stuff. And he's just like, do you have a better bad idea? It's just like, I'm going to do all this shit to, to feel better. And unless you've got a better bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. It's a, yeah, I like that one. Cause I think, no, I was thinking of a different song that was written by someone else. But, uh, yeah, that one is just a really good uh, – because, yeah, that's another kind of more upbeat one, even though the message itself isn't super like, yeah, single power. It's more just like, yeah, I don't really care. Let's just do shit. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, but my number five is Used Cars, which is like one of her very few love songs. Uh, I don't know if yep. you know this yep. one. Yep, but, yep, uh, yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, so anyone doesn't know, it's... Comparing dudes to cars. Yeah, it's objectifying men and saying they're objects. No. <laughs> Hashtag meninist. Pretty much the, the, the gist of it is she's loving this used car, quote-unquote, like a broken-down guy who her his previous, quote-unquote, owner, if, if he's the car, is she, like, you were her wreck, but you're my, like car that I like cruising around in and stuff like that. So it's pretty much just like, oh, one man's trash is another man's treasure type thing of, Mm -hmm. uh, she didn't, she didn't appreciate you. She didn't appreciate this model, but I'm going to, I'm going to love it and all this. And so it's like, you're not perfect. You're not this brand new, no dents, no baggage car. You're perfect kind of the way you are. I like though. I like that you need some work and all this kind of stuff. And, it's just a really, it's just a really nice love song. So I wanted to include it because it's just, it's really happy. So I like, I wanted to include that one. Yay, happy songs. Yeah, but number four. Number four, I went with Lavender Blue. Uh, from her, from, from the first one. first album, yes. And I don't know if she wrote it or not because you said that she didn't write a lot of those. <laughs> but whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a great song. Um, and I just like the line. It's I, I want to say it's something like, you took this red heart and turned it lavender blue and it's, you know, another song about being heartbroken and, you know, you know, even though you say we're over, you know, I'm still in love with you. She kind did of not things. write this. Well, shit. <laughs> she did write well, 10 years fast, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this, it's a really good song. I, I just, I don't know. It's great. It, it's, it's fitting the same mold of some of these songs that I've talked about with the you know the the you know either being hung up on someone after the fact and having your heart broken or just kind of the relationships ending but i just i really like that line where it's like you took this i want to say it was took this red heart and t- and turned it lavender blue yeah i'm not sure exactly but yeah no yeah it's a really i really like it cuz it's like a really pretty sounding song i guess it's yeah. just like it just sounds really good it's very calm and i really like that one too um, but my number four was from a table away, which is, that is her, a good song. which is pretty much her biggest hit of her career. Yeah. I want to say that I have heard that on, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if it never charted or at all or anything, but I want to say that I heard this on the radio. It charted at 10. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was, I want to was... say this is the only Sonny Sweeney song I feel like I've heard on the radio. Yeah, because this one, I remember loving it when I... Because, yeah, I heard it back on the, on the radio back the little bit. I li- used to listen to the radio back in the day because that was when I would, over the summers, work for the city, so the radio would always be on the truck. And, yeah, mm-hmm. I heard it. And then I saw the music video on... I used to always watch CMT Pure and GAC back when they used to play good music videos. And Never uh, happened. Yeah, yeah. It's a myth. Um, but, yeah, I remember seeing this video a lot and stuff because it was, like, this cool, like, black and white video and... I liked it, but, um, yeah, I like it, it's just, um, actually, I remember, I, I hate myself now for this because I'm an idiot, because I didn't know her that well back then, but she was 
during, I think it was his H2O tour, Brad Paisley's, he had uh, four openers, or five maybe, because he had two on the main stage with him, but then he had three or two or three on like a side stage. And Sonny Sweeney was on the side stage, and I never went to go see her because I was in the lawn, so I wanted to keep my seat saved. So I never left to go to the side stage to look, watch, and I'm so mad because I would have loved to see I would have loved to see Sonny Sweeney. But I'm going to see her twice this year, so I'm okay with it. Because yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, she's at Windy City Smokeout and uh, uh, Medicine Stone. So Medicine Stone. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so From a Table Away, yeah, it's her biggest hit. If you've listened to Sonny Sweeney, you know the song. But if not, um, it's pretty much like she goes to a restaurant and she runs into a guy she's been seeing who's been telling her, like, yeah, I'm going to leave my wife for you. I'm done with my wife. And it's like, well, From a Table Away, it looks like you guys are still in love and everything's going to work out fine between you two. So you don't have to lie to me anymore saying that you're going to leave her. That you're yeah. Just kind of I douche. also loved the, uh, the perspective where she's not, uh, like she doesn't attack the girl. She's like, she says like, I think I thought that she was pretty and you know, the girl that you described oh, yeah. could never have turned your yeah. head and all this, all this stuff that, he, that he's been feeding her this crap. And he, and she's just like, okay, like you're full of shit. Like, you're yeah. clearly still in love. She's pretty. She see like you know she doesn't yeah. know the person at all. But like just like okay, I can tell that you're just full of it. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much like you're a dick, and it's done between us. And stay with your wife, not me. Um, but yeah, I just that song. It's so catchy. It's such a good song. So and I've I've listened to that song since it came out six years ago, seven years ago or so. So I've been I had to include that one because that's the pretty much the longest i've ever known a song by her so it's yep. always been, it's always been a favorite number uh, three. three uh my number three is my bed uh featuring will hooge hoagie will hoagie whatever it is that you pronounce his name hoagie. i know that I, i've referred <laughs> i've referred to him before and this song before and i don't know how you're supposed to to pronounce it i feel like it's either hodge because that's how merrill hodge from espn pronounces it with the same spelling or it's it's hogue i feel like would be the other word you know, way to, who hooge is probably the uh, the answer who's hooge <laughs> who's um, hooge but my bad uh, to to totally continue this theme that i've been i've been building on <laughs> this entire top 10 of uh you know it's similar to the, the staying's worse than leaving theme or like I, I mentioned with the Chris Stapleton either way where the the relationship is like dying and she's aware of it and it, it you know it just gets to the point where she's just like now you're just a person sleeping in my bed and like I think it, it's a really great song they do a fantastic duet on it it's such a good song uh but to to without just beating a dead horse repeatedly about you know it's it's a sad song about relationships ending but like that crux of it you know now you're just you know, person sleeping in my bed. Like that's the, that's the gist. And it's fantastic. Yeah, that sums up the end of my relationship. Um, that one I didn't, <laughs> that one I didn't include on this list purely because I knew you would. And so I wanted to add more songs to the list than if, in case we had the taint, same 10 songs. So, um, good. Even though our lists have been very different so far. Which yeah. Is cool. Um, my number three is fall for me. Um, also from concrete, I believe. No, it's from... I'm an idiot. No, it's from Provoked. Uh, Damn it, Steve. <laughs> no, it's not from Provoked. What CD is it from? Well, I've, you suck. I know. I feel stupid. Well, I am stupid, so of course I feel stupid. No, I was right. It was on concrete. God damn it. Anyway, <laughs> I thought I, I had a feeling it was, but I didn't see it on the track listing, and then I realized it's the last song, and I'm an idiot. But, um... Yay. Yeah, pretty much it's just seeing... I, I don't... Shit. Sorry. I'm fucking up right now. Um, <laughs> so pretty much it's just like... I think it's pretty much like... Um, uh, she's kind of winning in this relationship and the guy's being a douche and it's just like, well, you're going to fall for me. So just like, eh, it's not going to happen. You're going to... I'm I'm moving on, but you're going to fall for me. You're going to feel bad about everything and just... I think it's about it. I was gonna say, I don't. I don't know enough about it. I I know the song because I I listen to all of the songs. Um, but yeah, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't refute that. However, my money's on your wrong. Just cause. 
Well, I don't think I am because I'm reading the lyrics, and it says, uh, even though I want you back, boy, trust me, it'll all be worth it when I make this tension last. It's gonna, it's already out of our hands like an hourglass sand because we're just a matter of time. So it is about an ex wanting her back, and she's just like, yeah, you're gonna fall for me, but uh, this is done. So I just like, it. and it's just a really catchy song, the way she sings it, and I just, I love this song, so I had to include it. Yeah, yeah. Um, number two, Kevon. Number two, Bottle by My Bed. That song Which sucks. is in a... Oh, fuck you. <laughs> it's such a great song. You know, it, we already talked about it a little bit, but it's, you know, it's this idea of all, like, all the things that she'd give just to have that bottle by her bed, the baby bottle, to, to be having her family. She's got the line, I only call my husband baby because I love that word. Like... She's just so like wanting this so bad and people aren't aren't aware that she has this feeling because, you know, everyone's raising kids and she's still raising cane. People think she's just having a great time just to have a great time. Uh, but, you know, she's she's trying. She's, you know, just wishing for this to happen. And, and you know, she says, I'll, you know, I'd give up these damned old cigarettes, which is a, a line. I feel like she's, she says like a couple times throughout other songs, just like about having a cigarette um but yeah she just wants she just wants this so bad and i just think it's a really beautiful song it's a heartbreaking song because it's you know from the perspective that it hasn't happened it's still not happening she says you know the mortgage is the only thing that's due and it's like oh this is depressing yeah um my number two i'm guessing is your number one is unsaid how'd you know yeah, because I knew I hadn't heard it on your list yet, and I knew you love that song, so I knew it was it's be so good. Yeah, it's haunting. <laughs> it's seriously, and it, the idea of you know someone passing away, and then just thinking of all these things left unsaid, and just the way that it's written and the way that she sings it. Like, yeah, I think haunting is a perfect you know description of it, but it's like haunting but beautiful. Yeah, it is a it is an amazing song. It is. I think it might be her best written song, but I only didn't have it at number one because I have a song that I love more than it. But this song is so fucking good, like it's it's truly amazing. And it was one where when I was compiling this list, I basically knew that this was going to be number one, and I knew I needed to have "Bottle by My Bed" and "My Bed." Lots of my beds. <laughs> um, I needed to have those at the top three. Um, but I didn't know where I'd go from there, but yeah, this one, this was a, just a rock because I, and I remember when I listened to the, the album trophy and with this being the last song on it, I was like, holy shit, because yeah. the album was just great. And then it finished on this and I was like, wow, that was an amazing album. Yeah. I'm just, I'm looking, I, even though we already know what the song's about, I'm looking at the lyrics right now and she just like the saddest line, never even said, I'm sorry. Never even said goodbye. Like, it's just, ugh. Yeah. Just and then all just this... these things that just ring in your head, and you can't say them now, and just oh, yeah, it's so like good. I mean, there, there's, it, I mean, obviously this is about a death, and it's much worse. But there are even like those moments when you feel like that with a person, a friend, or an ex, or anything like that. You feel like that's just like there's so much shit I want to still say to you, but I'm not going to. And this is there's so much stuff I want to say to you, and I physically can't. Yep. Like you are just you're gone. Like. There, you could always call up a friend or find them on Facebook or whatever, or an ex or any of that. And you could still say it, but this is there's physically no way you can say all this stuff that you wanted to say. And yeah, it's just yeah. it's it's a very sad song, but it's amazing. so good. My number one is one that I should I could have called you out for me, like how you said a bottle of wine, but that was too high. My number one is Stang's Worse Than Leaving. It, it that was and I, I I love that song I really do I just kind of I don't know it's just I don't know. it's just one I I mean it might be because of the current situation it might not be I don't know but it's just one that fits so well and it's just like we've gone we said it's it just so perfect of just like you think you love this person you think you need to you you're like obligated to stick it out but it's just like you're realizing that it's doing more harm than good and you you'll realize that uh it's gonna get better and that's just staying with you is just emotionally draining and it's just worse than actually taking the leap and leaving the person yeah i, I think the the reason i had to i left it a little lower 
was just because of the fact that that shares that common theme with the song "My Bed," where it where my bed isn't as much uh, isn't as much about the like just physical you know phys- not you know physical is like physical pain, but like the the emotional pain of the relationship you know getting to that point. I just thought that they shared a common theme, and with "My Bed" being like one of my just absolute favorite songs in general. I was like, I'll put it a little lower and fit some other songs in above it. Yeah. But it is it is an amazing song. Yeah, that's that's by far my favorite. But, um, yeah, so that rounds out our top ten. And, yeah, it was impossible to choose. If you asked me tomorrow, I'd probably have at least five different songs on it. Yeah, I could. <laughs> I, they could be all over the place. I, I, I wrote down at least 20 uh, when I was trying to just go through the albums and make a list. Yeah. And it was like, well, shit, I don't know what to do now. I had the top three pretty much set, and then the rest was just like, uh, we'll see. Yep, same. Yeah, but, um, yeah, so Sonny Sweeney is amazing. If you're listening because you're a fan, then awesome. If you're, I mean, let us know on any of the social me's, social me's if uh, you have different songs that you like that we left off and you think we're stupid for leaving them off. <laughs> and, um... But yeah, and likely in, it's just we like that song too, and we just you know we had to do ten. <laughs> and if you don't, if you haven't heard her, and you're just listening because you're a fan, then cool, you're a fan of us. But if also if you haven't heard Sunny Sweeney, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she's amazing. Listen to her music. I want another CD by her now. Even though she she teased us by releasing that uh, Heart guy Guy Clark or whatever or who was it. Was it Guy Clark? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that cover, Heartbroke. And it made me sad. I was like, oh, new CD. It was like, no, it's just a cover. You're singing, damn it. <laughs> but, Guy yeah. Clark is amazing, too. I wonder if he yeah. has any number ones. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's no Sam Hunt. Um, but, yeah, so moving on. There's nothing noteworthy coming out next week unless I miss something. But I saw nothing being released so yeah we might not have anything to review next week <laughs> but um but this week some good ones came out uh first was the Deslans hurry home uh pretty much, there were th- three really like bluegrassy albums that came out this week and they were all really good my favorite was the lonesome river bands uh Mahaley's home it's a really, 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 really good song or CD. It has like some that are super bluegrassy, and there's one that there's a couple that have a different singer, and it sounds kind of more traditional country. And it's just a really amazing CD, and I saved the whole thing. Another one was uh, Slade Cleaves' "Ghost on the Car Radio." It was good. My favorite two songs were "If I Had a Heart" and "To Be Held." Those were two really good songs. The whole CD was really good. He's a very traditional sounding dude. Um, but my favorite of the week was Luke Pitney, who may or may not be related to Mo Pitney. I don't know, but they're both from Rockford, Illinois, so I'm going to guess. There's and they're some... both Pitneys. Like, how many Pitneys can Rockford have? <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming they have to at least be cousins, because in his bio it said his brother, Zach, so I don't know. They have to at least be cousins, <laughs> or else they just it's the, just a nice coincidence, but I don't feel like it is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was my favorite. He released an EP called Without You. Um, my favorite song off it was Needle, Needle Meet the Vein, and it was just, it was really good. He's like, I looked at him on social media and stuff. He only has like 200 followers on uh, Twitter, so he's definitely an unknown guy. And so if you were listening, listen to him. He is really good. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's all from really last week. They were all good CDs. There wasn't one that I listened to and I was like, eh, I'm going to turn this crap off. Because uh, <laughs> there's usually one. But um, yeah, what we're listening to, I've. I mean, I watched Oh Hello on Netflix, which was hilarious. And that's really yeah. about it. I've yeah, been listening I to, I've been listening to Sonny hilarious. Sweeney. Yeah, it was so funny. I just love all the times you could tell they're just improvising. <laughs> like, they're they're on Broadway and they're improvising. It's so funny. Yeah, no, that's um, hilarious. But yeah, so, um, I would lis- yeah. I was listening to before the weekend. Um, I was listening to Paul Cawthon again because every time I see 
like the it's one of those like sponsored posts that always comes up in my my uh, my Facebook videos. Like after you scroll through a couple of videos, it just like hits you with a sponsored one where yeah. where he and Cody Jinx do the cover of Black Hole Sun. So I went back to Paul Cawthon's My Gospel album and re-listened through it because it's really fucking good. And I was like, yeah, yeah this guy's really good. Yeah, it is. He's a, he's a, I see him on Instagram a lot because I'm the one who runs our Instagram, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, I don't know how Instagram works. Yeah, I don't and either, and I use it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's it for this week. You can find the podcast stuff on Facebook and Twitter. They're both the Hodgecast. You can email us at G- the Hodgecast at Gmail. You can also find it find it on SoundCloud if you're listening on iTunes. But if you're listening to it, you've probably found it, so you don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find us at our website, countryhodgepodge.com. It's also Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook of Country Hodgepodge. Um, if you want to listen to the songs we talk about every week, we have a Spotify playlist called Hodgepodgecast Picks. Uh, we have a bunch of shirts up on TeePublic. If you go to tpublic.com slash user slash Clifftron, I might change that to slash Country Hodgepodge because that makes more sense. Yeah, um, including the great shirt, uh, perfect for the 4th of July, which when this goes up, you'll have absolutely no time to order and have it delivered <laughs> by then. Uh, the America Fuck Yeah shirt, so that's yeah, there. That, that's a good one. I've had a few people buy that one, actually, because it's awesome. Just it's just the American flag in the shape of the United States, and it says "fuck yeah" underneath it. So my mom wanted me to make one that said "heck yeah," and I said no. Um, we have standards. Yeah, exactly. Who says America heck yeah? Um, <laughs> or she's like, or at least hell. I'm like, no, it's fuck yeah. Song is fuck yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, my Facebook is and Twitter is Steve Hodge Music. Kevin's Twitter is Churchford, spelled how it sounds. Um, so yeah, next week we'll be covering Sam Hunt. Stay tuned. So until next week, I am Steve Hodge, as always, joined by the great Kevin Hodge, saying goodbye, good night, and good Charlotte. Mm-hmm.